Suriname, a beautiful country sitting on the northern border of South America. I didn't know anything about this place before I was invited on this journey. But pretty soon I found myself sitting anxiously in a plane. And then a bus. And then a boat. Before I get too far into this journey, let me give you some context. A group of six KU students, an ant expert, a spider expert, two postdocs, and Professor Andrew Short were traveling to Suriname, where they would meet up with other Surinamese students and professors to study and collect beetles. Dr. Short was looking for a specific group of beetles. I was given the opportunity to document this trip. This is what happened. Once the battery was replaced, we could finally be on our way. This river was the Kopename River, and how you navigated the river depended heavily on the level of water. When we were there, it was on the low side, and this revealed the rocky geography of the riverbed, and that also meant that we had plenty of tight spaces to weave through. And some of the boats fared better than others with the weight of all our supplies. One of them was nearly sitting underneath the water. We'll come back to that one later. After almost four hours on the boat, we still hadn't reached the island. And soon, we couldn't see. For the first 20 minutes, the boatmen didn't even use flashlights, somehow navigating the river through instinct. But after an extra hour, we finally made it. Now came the task of unloading everything from the boats. And pretty soon I had to stop filming and start helping out. But one of the boats hadn't arrived yet. Let's see what's holding them up. We were able to rescue these guys without any problem, but we had to leave their boat there overnight and come back for the supplies in the morning. Now let's get to the island itself. We stayed in a sort of open shelter that sat right by the river. And as you can see, the river is pretty low right now. Actually, that big mass of rocks over there is where we parked our boats. Also, there were a ton of these bird vulture things on the island. They're pretty funny to watch. And I have plenty of footage of them. The island was actually inhabited by some locals, and was also a tourist spot. Usually it would be a stepping stone to go to Volzburg. We'll come back to that later. I just know he's talking. Right. 
All jokes aside, the food was actually exceptional. You can't take any pictures of the food because you want people to think that it was actually really rough and This is just for me to reminisce. <laughs> and it was even more impressive because we had brought all of the food and supplies ourselves. Warrants of warning. And people are screaming well, in the elevator. Like, this is not in Paris. Mm -hmm. And then you have this. It doesn't even react at all. It's <laughs> just like. <laughs> just like. Oh, like, <laughs> oh, okay. The first phase of our jungle adventures was to set up traps in different areas along the island and also on the other side of the river. There were a few traps that I learned there, such as... North 4 degrees, 43.293. West 56 degrees. West 56. 531. 531? Yep. yep. And the other one was 43. I'm just gonna put it down there. Um, does anyone have a Ziploc bag that I can bar I can use and then give you another one back? After all the trapping and collecting, on a couple different nights. We had the chance to go on a night hike, which basically meant that we would go out into the jungle in the dark to see what creepy crawlies came out. I'll just let the night hike speak for itself. Snake tree. Hey, snakey. I am looking in fermented fruit for beetles, which are incredibly tiny. Also, they may not be there. These are so very small, and I, I generally don't buy There was an ant, probably an anacena, which is like the most common, which is what I would expect. Well, I'm just going to float stuff, so I'm going to take this and put it in here. So I have more control over the situation here. There's like, okay, this water's like going shoosh and like doing this. So what I usually do is I build like a little sand wall. Like I'm, I'm building like a little wall here, so it's a baffle. 
it looks like we're trying to like be children and build a sand castle. One of the problems with Dr. Short's beetles is that they are very, very small. And up until this point, I still hadn't filmed any of the ones we were looking for. But after a lot of searching, and that same bajillion beetle, <laughs> right? That's cool. He's so quick. <laughs> and they do, they go right into the sand. Mm-hmm. Worry about your drunk death. <laughs> cool. Don't hang out there. And the plastic thing <laughs> to put some of the vegetables in. Fast little guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, yep, found our spot. Yep. This guy. What's happened to him? He's oh. scared. It's like, where'd they go? I'm exposed. Voltsburg is a 240 meter high granite dome in the middle of the Suriname jungles. And we were going to climb it. First we had to hike to a small camp at the base of Voltsburg to sleep for the night before making the climb up in the morning. There was a small structure at the campsite, but over the years the foundation had been sliding down towards the river. It had such a lean to it that even walking through it was a little disorienting. And couple that with the crazy bat room, and we thought it was a pretty smart decision to not set up our camp in the building. After settling in, we could focus on preparing for tomorrow's journey, which included filling up our water bottles by filtering water from the river with a very slow and very squeaky water pump. <laughs> Yes. Are you recording that also? <laughs> it's going to happen a lot of times. So <laughs> oh my god, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I took off the case so we could hear it better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you have to help. Okay. You ready? Okay. Ready? Popo kondre mang uto po sranagrong e kariun Wasopeta ta komopo Limose i kondre bun Srede srede no sa frede Gado de vi fesima
really. <laughs> but I will say that you should take time to savor moments like this. <laughs> nice. That's the end card. Yeah, that's just the ending. I think I should be. During the trip back home, I let everything sink in. The journey is about what you do, who you're with, and how you let it affect you. This journey wasn't just about coming and getting beetles. It wasn't even about the place. It was about getting outside of my comfort zone, truly exploring the world around me. I am so grateful I had the opportunity to take this journey. It was one of the most memorable experiences of my life. One thing this journey taught me is that you can't stop. You can't get comfortable. You can't get complacent. The journey teaches you that you need to take more journeys. And that makes me happy because I cannot wait for the next one.